out of, uh, this is the start of what we do um, and why I believe what I do is different. So the first thing that many people get told is when they learn to play golf is that they hold the golf club out there with the navel, the butt of the golf club pointing at the navel. What we believe uh, that does is it creates an arm, a right arm that's very straight like this and it's not in a very good position. Uh, it's, a, it's a position that can create a huge amount of width in the backswing but we don't believe as I already said that width is something that's necessary. What we do to try and help all of our amateur golfers include, uh, improve their ball striking uh, and to help them change their ball flight is, the first thing we do is we get them to put their right arm like this at a dress. Then we get them to rotate the forearm and then we get the golf club to come in from the side. Now what this does is, when the club is placed down like that, it allows them to take the golf club back and it allows the right arm and the right wrist to fold how we want them to. That is a position that we want to have in the golf swing. It's also a position that we want to have in many other sports. If I pull in another couple of objects here, what you're going to find is that that position of the right arm and the wrist happens in other sports. Yeah. So the other sports that we're going to look at, namely tennis, baseball, because we're going to try and keep the action very natural, like they are in those kind of sports. So if I was standing hitting a tennis ball towards this wall here, you'd see as I took the racket back, my right elbow would fold and so would my right wrist as I come in to hit the shot. Someone playing baseball, they already preset that when they stand. Now with both of these actions, you don't find someone, for instance, playing baseball going like this, turning their left shoulder across. They'll stand more like this while they're waiting for the ball to be pitched to them. And we certainly have never really seen Roger Federer going like this when he's gone to hit a forehand. When Federer's gone to hit, that's just gone back like that, and then the racket's come around. So we're trying to get people to swing a golf club in a manner that's fairly natural in many other things that they would do in life. And starting off with the right arm like that, in a right straight right arm position, which shoves the pelvis back a little bit, really isn't a good spot. As soon as we get people to rotate the right arm, in that manner there, you'll see that we start to already put the right wrist into this position here. And this is what we want. We want people to try and feel that they're nearer impact. With every good golfer, we know the impact with the handle leading the club head, so what we try and do is, is put people nearer there before we even get them to hit the golf ball. So a great drill at home that we uh, give people to try and get the feeling for the right arm and, and how the golf club should go away for all these people who take it away like this and try and get wide is we have a simple hands drill that we get people to do. So we take the right hand, we go through the, the positioning of hand in front, slightly in front of my rib cage, I rotate that over and then over the top of that hand I'm going to put my left wrist so you'll see the back of the right wrist has got some angle and the left wrist is fairly flat when you look at it compared to my watch. And what we get people to do is feel like as they set up here in their nice posture, athletic posture, that what they're going to find is as they work the golf club away, the right wrist and the right elbow are going to fold and the left arm is just going to maintain its width. It is not going to get wide. It can get narrow, it can't get wide. For my right left arm to get wide, I have got to get wide. And moving my centre over there is not going to be a way to get a 15, 18, 20 handicap golfer to get the club back into the golf ball at the same time, in the same position time and time and time again. It's not something we really believe is, is a good way of doing it. So from the front, I'm in my posture, bit of angle in the back of my right wrist. Why? Because we know that's where we want to be at impact, so let's put people nearer there at address. Left wrist over the top, you'll see that's fairly flat and away. I can rotate that hand back round now you can see and that's a pretty good position to be able to swing the golf club from. From there I can just take the golf club up and I'm into a good position. It may well look like I haven't shifted any weight or it may well look like I haven't turned as much but what it is is it's a, it's a more controlled, better method I believe for getting people to hit the golf ball more consistently, more often. So one of the main drills we get people to do um, is a pushing drill. I've spoken about in my application about what I believe is a pushing impact. 
I don't like to see this. I don't think that a release per se with this way is very helpful at all. I term it a flick, it's not a release. What I like to see people doing is really getting a feel for the fact that if they put that right elbow in the correct position, they're going to push the bag, not flick the bag, flick the bag. They're going to push, 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 and that gives us a stronger impact position. So that's one of our first major drills that we get people to do. We'll ask them to get the right hand in that position, rotate it over, put the club on, maybe even just gently push against the bag before they start and then push and walk, push and walk, push and walk. This really is the major drill that I use with absolutely everybody. Most club golfers that we get, and to be honest with most of the professionals and amongst TGI pros, we're probably teaching a vast majority of guys on the double digit handicappers, 18 plus, beginners etc. That's where we spend most of our time performing our coaching. So we know that a lot of these people that are trying to create weight, they're trying to create a big turn and their body perhaps doesn't allow them to do it. And what that means is they shift off the golf ball a huge amount. Now trying to get all of this from the top of the backswing back down to here with a decent path and a good club face position when we've got to do that in 0.5 of a second from the top of the backswing down to impact is a very difficult thing to do. So the first thing we get everybody to do and to learn after we've got the setup position right, is a drill that we call the scissor drill. And I'm going to demonstrate that for you now. What we get people to do is, we get people to flex their left knee and have their right leg a long way back, feeling that they'll almost put their right leg and a spine in a straight line. And then they will address. And the golf ball will be all the way forwards, opposite that left toe. What we then get people to do is we get them to start off by making little swings backwards and forwards, backwards and forwards. So if we show you that from the front, the right foot is it nearer in, in a line. We've got a little bit of knee flex, so we've got the balance that we need. It's back, it's through, it's back, it's through, it's back, it's through. What is that doing? Well, first of all, and this is why I say it's biomechanically correct, that left knee, if we want the left knee to move, it was designed to move in that manner. It was not designed to move like that. And one of the biggest things that most club golfers do is they lose pressure with the floor as they take the golf club back. This drill will stop people from doing that. They will always push against the ground, which helps them to create force. It helps them to create power, and it helps them to create stability. Once they've got used to that, we can even get them to hit some golf shots like it. So you can see here, we've come out onto the practice ground and what we're going to do now is we're going to hit a shot with the scissor drill and we're going to hit one from the back there and we're going to hit one from the front so you can see the difference. What I'd really like to pay attention to from the back is how my left knee is going to compress. You're going to see more flexion in the knee. Ball opposite the left foot. Right leg and spine feeling like they are fairly together. So from the front, we're going to show you the scissor drill. Ball's going to be opposite the left leg. And my left leg, how is my left leg going to work? That's how my left leg works. Right arm, creating that position that we spoke about where the right elbow feels like it's a little bit tucked in. And I'm going to feel that I get the handle a little bit forward with the right wrist angle in there. We're not going to be straight right arming like this. From there, right foot is back. Shot. And you can see I'm rotating around my left leg. We are not rotating around the spine and creating width. We're getting a left leg that feels like it's in a line there. We're working back and we're working around that left leg. We find that so many people shift off the ball like this. They have found it difficult to get back to the ball to create a strike. But the other thing they do is they spin the hips out. This hip works back this way. And we all know that creates the dreaded slice and the over-the-top motion. So 
You'll see another drill that we're going to do here, uh, and really the sort of final one that I'm going to uh, present to you, is something to do with um, width. I said in the uh, application that I don't believe we get wide in the golf swing. For me, the left arm is the length that the left arm is, and if we're rotating around that, we're going to keep that at its natural length, and we're not going to let things escape and try and create width. I really don't like the phrase getting wide in a golf swing. I really don't like it at all. What we've done here is just put a little bit of tape around this black, around this shaft bit of black tape to help show you, and we've brought the explanar in that we have here. Put the club on the ground, just slightly off the ground, and you'll see the black tape of the is on the explanar ring. And what you're going to see when that left leg looks like it's a little forward and I've got a little bit of my right wrist angle is that as I take my golf club away I'm going to pretty much keep that black tape just about on. I'm not going to get wide because we can't get wide. My left arm cannot grow. You'll see for me to get wide what am I going to do? I've got to shift off which a lot of people do so we really don't like that. What we like people to do is if they've got this right arm anatomically correct with the elbow pointing back here towards the hip, we're able to get people to take the golf club away. You can see there that the black tape is still on the rail just there, so I know the radius or the width of it has stayed exactly the same as we've taken the golf club away. And my right arm has folded into that position. If from our address position, we're not able to let the right arm do that, we really are going to have a problem. And one of the drills we quite often get people to do is one hand on there, there, and this elbow should not have to go away, it should not feel like it wants to go like this, or back in here. Right elbow pointing at my right hip, like that. And you'll see from the still image that we're going to show you a better and a little bit clearer image of that position just there.